then again like when you work with gessos you should don't have this anxiety against it um it's all about practice and it's all about just doing your research knowing how to use it and just you know knowing the create ratio the the right ratio of water to gesso or water to acrylic paint um i recommend not using acrylic paint because uh it's i'm just not sure of how much uh plastic or polymer is in that and it's really about trying to lighten the page and the line art so if you're printing print print gray um, if you're doing something with a book, use a Posca pen, it's really safe. Um, and Posca pen is really good because the Posca pen is a really good base for most pigments, for most other things. So for example, I use Posca pen to do this uh, metallic, um, metallic detail. And the reason why I use Posca pen is because Posca pen sticks to shiny surfaces. Well, not all sh shiny surfaces, but if I was to put a watercolour paint on top of this, it's too slippery, it won't stick um, just because the surface has been um, been burnished and shiny so water won't, uh, water won't stay, it would be a lot harder for it to stay so the Posca pen helps create that base and the metallic paint sticks to that white acrylic base um, so that's my that's my little that's my little tip. Um, what we're going to do now is the hair, but I want to do the art the face first before I get onto the hair and the accessory here. Now, what you want to do is the most exciting things that I love is eyes. Now, I'm gonna try and make these eyes um, a bit dramatic if I can. And I'm going to use this jasmine, which is 1012. I'm going to create a base, just a little yellow base around the pupil. I don't think gesso is really a good primer for watercolor. Like I get why gesso works because it's a paper. It's a surface protector, but if you use gesso, you might not be able to achieve the bleed that you get with watercolor on watercolor paper. Now, if you want to prime your watercolor surface, there is watercolor ground, which is which is a great one is by Daniel Daniel Smith, I think. Daniel Smith does a really good watercolor ground. Um, you don't see much of this product around. But watercolor ground has granules in it, almost like, I guess, almost like it creates the, the holes in the surface like how watercolor paper does. Um, I'm not sure how absorbent it is, but maybe with watercolor grounds you can still create that bleed effect. But I'd have to do some tests with the gesso whether gesso will allow you to have that watercolor bleed. You probably still can use watercolor on gesso, but the effects the effects of it may differ as to paper. But when you buy beautiful watercolor paper, like Archer's paper, it just, it makes a difference as well. So that's, um, that's a bit of my knowledge there when it comes to um, papers and primers. So, continuing what I was saying, with the 1012, you want to create like a yellow ring around this pupil. And it's really light. And then you want to go in with a uh, Charteris, which is 989. I never pronounce it wrong. I always pronounce it wrong. I know I do. I butcher it. But, um, forgive me. Uh, you want to go near that yellow. Bring in some of that green. And we're doing really light layers because these eyes will be blue, but this yellow and green is just gonna pop. That's my that's my intention. I want it to pop. 
So what I want to do now is go in with my darkest of the blue, which is Aquamarine, which is 905. Actually, it's not my darkest of blue. I'm going to grab a... Electric blue. I'm very... F some of my blues come out funny, and I think some of the formers are a bit faulty. Um, that's what happens with quality over the years with Prismacolor. Some of the quality, some of the pencils quality consistency is like eh. But um, hopefully this one is a good one and not a dud. Uh, it's a bit duddy. And you can tell, I can show you. Let me just show you how to tell if a pencil is a dud. Alright. So you can tell by the texture, the texture of the pencil pigment to the paper. When it gets like this, it's kind of duddy. Like it's, it's either, even when I go in quite lightly, and if I just build up on that layer, it's very, it's very waxy. It's not normal. Um, if I was to go in with another color, like for example, if we work with this red, right, the blend is smooth, you can tell, but some, sometimes with Prismacolors, the formula is a bit duddy or the, the actual color, or this actual color is really bad, um, and it comes out like this. Um, I'd have to buy another, another off the shelf, um, pencil of this at like, just to test whether, is it the color or is it the quality, you know? Um, so sometimes things like that happen, but, um, hopefully it will turn out all right on this eye and I'm not using that much of this electric blue. Okay, so the electric blue was 1040, and I only want to put a ring around the eye. It's not going to be the hero blue, but I need this blue just on the outskirts of the eye. Okay, so in with the aquamarine, that is 905. I'm going to zoom in. Yeah, that's fine. So 905. Small circular motions. And see how that aquamarine just eats into that green and has that green undertone? It's really interesting. I want to continue that effect. I'm going to add a bit of this aquamarine in here. Now I'm going to go in with light aqua, Not light aqua. go in with yes, light aqua, which is 992. This is one of my favorite colored blues. I think it's very beautiful, very Tiffany and Coe-y. Um, I really need to get another one of these. Like I always uh, stock up on the colors that I use most that I find very intriguing. And I think this blue is just one of those blues that just pop, you know. Now I'm bringing this aquamarine over the green and the yellow.
going to bring it down as well into the pupil. I'm going to bring in the black. Back in with that aquamarine, which is a 905, just continuing that color into this eye. Now, the blue that we put down before, the electric blue, didn't pop as much as I'd like it to. So I'm going in with a, another blue, which is violet blue. Hopefully, this is not too purple, but hopefully, it will give me the um, the contrast that I need. So 933, you're just going to create a ring. There we go. Like that. Like so. Now I want to go back in with that with a white, which is 938. And this is going to lighten everything, which is my intention. Now, I want to, these little white areas that I've left, I want to fill those in. I'm going to avoid the black, by the way like so, and just blend it between, like that, same here, and then we're going to go over everything, starting off with the yellow area, working our way out, Back in with your black. Work in between that. In with the straw Posca pen, the straw yellow. Just going to create some highlights where I want the yellow just to pop a bit. Almost like you want these yellow flecks in the eyes, like so. Then you want to go with your white.
Don't you worry. So what you want to do is with a watercolour brush, while that Posca pen is still wet, we're just going to jiggle that pigment so it becomes a bit translucent. Now you can mix it with a little bit of water as well to make it more milky. Let me just zoom out if I'm missing anything. It's not bad. I want to go with that black pencil again. Okay. I'm going to do two things. With that 933, I'm going to create some texture. See how I've done those lines? Just to add some texture. Going in with our 905, which is the ultramarine, we're going to do the same thing as well. Blending that aquamarine into that black. Getting that black. Okay. So let's create some eyeshadows. So eyelashes. I might actually do the under color, like the eyeshadow color of the eyes. Now I want to go in with some milky yellow colors. So let's go in with Jasmine, which is 1012. Blend it down like so. And then you want to go in with your sand, which is 940. Go on top of that as well. 
not burnishing, just build up that layer. Extending this as well, just really lightly though. Then you want to go in with white, which is 938. You want to burnish it now. This will lighten the colour. Give it that milky yellow. Yep. We're going to leave this unburnished because we'll complete that when we do the skin. Now what you want to do is go in with a pink colour, which is 928. Create the shadows of your tear ducts. And then you want to go in with a grey colour. This is 1065. Create the shadows around the eyes like so. Here there would be shadows. And really lightly do that. You want to go in for your white which is 938. This is where we burnish and it's going to lighten the grey that we've placed around the eye. I'm going to go in with a red, which is 925. I just want to add some of this colour at the tear ducts. Go back in with that red with 938 and lighten that pink now. Let me zoom out slightly. We're going to proceed with bits of the skin. Getting your grade lavender, which is 1026, you're going to create the shadows between the eyes. Now this is a bit of a pinky purple. We need to put something a bit more bluey. So this is just a light base. So start off with this colour here, really lightly. You want to run this underneath the neck as well. And on the shoulders. In with your 1024, I'm going to go over that purple, go over that purple, feather that out, I'm going to softly fade it to the brows. In with the pink, which is 928. Build up that cheek colour. Bring that also here.
bring that pink into the yellow like so into the forehead around the lashes here and then top of the shoulders With 992, we're going to create some of this color as shadow on the shoulder as well, really lightly. And then in the neck as well. I'm running this as shadow underneath this necklace. In with that blue color, which is 1024, let's create that jawline shadow, like so. I'm going to go in with like a peach, which is 1001. I'm going to extend this peachy color down. Bring this into the cheeks. I'm going to deepen it a bit here. Back in with that 928, I want to just intensify that pinkiness here and here, blend it into that peach colour. Right. Adding some of this pink on the nose. Bit of that blue around now in with a gray we're going to use this color to kind of bring it all together so I'm going to lightly build shadows around the nose Fill in these eyebrows. I'm 
the neck. The shadow here around the face. I'm going to extend that shadow into the face. I'm going to run this grey over the pink here, like so. And surprisingly, this is where we burnish. So make sure your white is very clean. You want to start off at the white sections. Actually, let's bring in some skin tone just to like pull it all together. So, light peach or a cream? What color? What color? Probably go with a light peach. Actually, no, we will go neither. Neither. We will go with a seashell pink. So this is 1093. Turning your pencil on its side, you're going to create a base over everything really lightly. Run it over everything. The nose, not the lips though. Just everywhere there's skin. That's all you do. Now you go with the white. With 938, you're going to burnish from these center points. Small circular motions. Working under the eyes, working to the cheeks, working your way down. Around the jaw, create that triangle shape around the mouth, work your way up.
at the neck. Now with the black, the lashes. In with magenta, which is 930. Small circle motions with a sharp pencil. And then in with 928. And then with a lighter color, 1014. And then in with white. Back in with that one zero one four.
in with the seashell pink, which is 1093. Just outline it all here. Zoom out. I'm going to do the hand and then finish off with the hair. Combination of similar colours. With Then in with nine two eight. And in with the one zero two four. Then in with white. So we go in and burnish the coloured sections first, blending it all together. and then burnishing the whole thing. Going in with the 1065, I'm just going to enhance that shadow here and under these sleeves. Hands. Back in with a white. Blend that out. Okay. Let's do the necklace. In with your 
30% cool grey, which is 1061. Just blending that out. In with the white and burnish the rest. In with a white pasta pen. And then in with black. A black Posca. White highlight. Well, that bled out too much. Fix that with Go in with a gel pen instead. This is a touch new gel pen. There we go. I want to go in with that nine nine two. This is why I like Posca pens. You can still color on top of them um, as to anything else. See how it's still taking that pencil pigment? Now to the hair. The hair. Okay, so you guys are going to think I'm crazy, but. Going in with your Copenhagen Blue, which is 906. And 
and then in with your violet blue, which is 933. In with your grey, which is 91065, going on top of that 933, blending that out.
in with the 992 I'm going to And in with a lighter grey. The lighter grey is 1061. I'm doing my hair really loose today and because it's white we're using a lot of this as like underpainting anyway. go in with white. Okay, so starting off where the lighter sections are, I'm just going back and forth like so.
here, zooming out, I'm going to go in with some Posca pen and light gel pen to do some touch highlights.
Okay. Now I want to go in with a felt tip. Okay. I'm going in with a uni pin fine liner and I'm going to define the lashes. So we're going to finish off with the lashes, just to give it that contrast. I'm going to go in with a black Posca pen. I'm just going to intensify some of the black in the pupil. I'm placing some few lines with a Posca pen.
Let's zoom out. I'm going to take away this masking tape and then we'll touch base. Okay guys, this is a finished piece. This is my Paulson's Valance um, Flying Fish by Jasmine Becker Griffith from the Mermaid Coloring Book. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial, completely done in Prismacolor pencils and some Posca pens here and there. And I hope you guys like the color palette. Very similar to the original, just more lightened. And I thoroughly enjoyed this. It's always nice to get back to the basics or get back to the foundations of coloring, which is just coloring pencils and just techniques and just taking your time. This took me probably a day and a half. And so the footage will be around six hours probably. Thank you for being so patient with me and just welcoming me into your rooms and keeping me company and I hope that I have made your coloring process so much easier and that you've been able to learn something from my tutorials. Um, if you guys have done my tutorials or have enjoyed them, please share them with people that you know. Um, if you've done any tutorials, uh, any artworks that are influenced by my pieces, please tag me. I would love to showcase your uh, work on my Instagram page. And if you guys just love what I do, what I bring to the coloring community, check out my socials, check out what I do, check out my coloring pages. Um, and I hope you guys have enjoyed. That's all from me today, guys. It's Tao from Shine Bright Design. Be you, be true, and shine bright. Stay safe, guys. Bye.